phase one is complete with the main excavation work for this irrigation pond, which I documented a few days ago. I'll link to that here for the introduction to that. But the main, the basic earthworks are done. The basic shape and the overall volume is set. It's very possible we could go deeper in the center area over time, but the walkways and the berms are all where they need to be. And in fact, we set up a 600 gallon tank on an earth berm based on the subsoil that was coming out. And we can test that when we actually get some water in here. So we're ready for the next phase. When I made that first video about this, I was asking folks for their opinion about pond liners and leaning towards um, either rubber, pond liner, or RPE. A bunch of folks suggested the idea of clay or bentonite. Lots of good ideas. And so what I'm going to actually do, though, is lean into the more permaculture model of observe and interact. So it's set, and I can commit to a rubber or petroleum liner at some point in the future, but for now, by having this tank right nearby, we're in a place where if we were to get a flash rain, some sort of torrential downpour out of nowhere, we can start collecting water and I can look at using a solar panel to lift that water quickly to store and charge at least some batteries right nearby. This whole area can be IBC totes and containers. And so I'm gonna let it be the way it is for now and watch and learn from it and then decide on committing to a liner later on, either sometime in the fall or maybe even next year. This will certainly keep the cost down. In fact, there's no more money to be spent on this project for now. And I'm leaving my shovel and my pick out here in some buckets. If I feel inspired to go deeper, this is an area to remove more material potentially, but I don't think I wanna go any further on these sides. As we are going through, we're laying up this berm of soil all the way around. And what that does is it reserves the option that if I were to commit to a liner, could bring the liner even up to here and then pin it down all the way across. I'd have to find level in advance. I'm gonna explain this little divot in a moment, but that gave us a lot of material. And then I also took a tarp and set it off to the side and took some really crumbly material and set it on there. So if we were to get a liner, we can cover it, or if we needed more material to find level or build up the berms, either way, we've got some material in reserve that's ready to go. In the short run, what I'd like to do is see if we can get the pond to fill to this line passively, simply by being a diversion or a stop for water that flows through a channel in the landscape. This little trench was dug out in the past, and I know when we get a really heavy rain and the land can't absorb the water fast enough, everywhere up watershed, which starts in here and goes right on up quite a bit and beyond this property, it'll sheet flow and follow channels to leave the property. And so what I can do is invite it down this side channel and fill up this whole five to 10,000 gallons of reserve with that flow. But that presupposes a really heavy rain out of nowhere, so maybe we get that. I'll have to do some more earthwork in here and probably cut this down a little bit lower to really invite that water in. Once it starts flowing in, it really has no way out until it gets to either that corner or the far corner. I have to watch and see. I'm gonna use water level as my measuring tool, although I may find a level stick and put a laser on it and aim it around just to kind of see if there's some major things I need to fix in the before we get all the water. But anyway, this channel that will come into here, if I follow this back, it's completely vegetated now, but that's good because that means it's gonna catch silt as it goes. But it goes in between some autumn olives and sea berries, some apples, some oaks, butternuts. So this whole area around it is planted and will keep it shaded and filtered in the long run. And it comes back to right here. There's a T. If you saw this in the winter, that would make a lot more sense. But basically from this channel upward, water flows in this direction when we get heavy rains or when the ground is fully saturated. And in a past video, I was talking about using a solar panel to run a bilge pump in this little channel that can suck water and send it into this tank. And so we can passively send the water blocking 
the overflow in this direction send the water right through here and down and into that pond. And so long as I'm ready for it, I can use a solar panel and a pump to fill that 600 gallon cistern and maybe a whole series of IBC tanks and reserve at least many hundreds of gallons, if not a few thousand gallons perched above these garden beds, even if that pond doesn't hold water much at all. We're down to just shy of 300 gallons of water remaining in the two tanks associated with that cob structure. That is all the water that I have to water everything in this whole area. So needless to say, uh, we are not watering certain areas. We're letting certain things die. Um, but you can see just how much water stress everything is under. So when we get, hopefully, finally, some good heavy rain, you better believe I'm going to be out here within 12 hours of that to see how the water flows, make sure it's aiming where it needs to go and get it into that pond so we can pull it and store it in containers up there. Thank you all for your input from the last video. Lots of good ideas, lots of arguments for pros and cons on different ways of lining a pond. Um, but the idea, I don't think it hurts things to leave it as it is for now, wait for that first rain, observe it, interact with it, and that can be a moment where I commit to the liner, or maybe I start by mixing some sodium bentonite with the wet clay down in here and see if we can't glay it or seal it naturally, clay and sodium bentonite up to a certain level. Does that get us what we need? If not, I'm very happy to go with an actual pond liner in the future, but for now I'd like the idea of just seeing what it does, and that's where it is. So. No more major digging on this one. We'll get back to the big pond next. This was about 40 hours of total labor, 35. And it's in a great position to learn from and boy, I hope hold many thousands of gallons of water after the next good rain. I'll make an update either way. Thanks for watching.